I am a very blessed man. I would have to say I'm one of the most blessed people I know. <laughs> That's the truth. I'm married to a wonderful woman. Amen. Felicity is truly a gift from God, and I could go on and on, use the entire sermon time just to talk about my amazing wife. But uh, I won't put her that much on the spot. But I know I'm blessed, and I'm very thankful. But as most of you know, this is not my first marriage. A little over nine years ago, the woman who was my wife at the time told me, Kevin, I'm leaving you. She no longer wanted to be married to a minister. And although I offered to leave the ministry, she said she still wouldn't stay. And leave she did. We were separated for over two years. It was the most painful time I have yet experienced in my entire life. I did everything I could think of to try and save my marriage. I prayed and prayed like I have never prayed before. I begged God to heal my marriage. And even though at different times and in different ways, God let me know that He was there and that He was working, the marriage still was not healed. It ended in divorce. Have you ever been in a situation in which no matter how much or how hard you pray, the healing just won't come? Maybe like me, you were praying for the healing of a relationship and it just wouldn't happen. Or maybe you or someone you love is in need of physical healing. But the miraculous recovery just never seems to arrive. Or maybe you're just in a terrible situation of whatever kind. And you pray and you pray and you pray. But it just doesn't seem to ever get any better. Have you ever been there? Are you there now? Why do we go through things like this? Some people ask, why do bad things happen to good people? Now, of course, you know, we can find ourselves suffering because of sin. Because of some way in which we've been disobedient to God, and we, we've rebelled against God. When someone in a situation like that suffers... We may sympathize with them. We may hurt for them. But we understand it. They made bad choices. And now they're paying the price. And when we suffer because of our own bad choices, we may not like it, but it makes sense. But what about when suffering comes even though you're doing your best to seek God and doing your best to obey Him. You're trying to be the man or the woman that God has called you to be, but something terrible happens anyway. And no matter how hard you pray, the healing won't come. What then? What does that mean? The Apostle Paul was seriously committed to obeying God. He would serve God and take a stand for God, even in situations that would put his life at risk. Paul sacrificed his career. He was on the fast track to success in his culture. He sacrificed his career and his comfort to follow Jesus. And God used him. God used Paul in a big way. As a matter of fact, Paul was perhaps the greatest missionary that Christianity has ever seen. Paul received amazing wisdom and insight from God. Paul even received visions and revelation directly from God. 
Paul said that at one point he was caught up to the highest heaven. And he saw and he heard things that are impossible to communicate, things beyond words, things he's not even, he was not even allowed to talk about. Paul was a, I guess you could say, a model Christian. But that only makes what we're about to read all the more puzzling. Please take your Bibles and turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. That's page 822 in the Bibles provided in the pews. 2 Corinthians 12. In 2 Corinthians 12, beginning in verse 7, the Apostle Paul writes this. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Paul was given a thorn in the flesh, as he puts it. Well, what was it? What was Paul's thorn in the flesh? You know, down through the century, scholars have speculated about what that thorn actually was, and they've proposed all sorts of possibilities, and each one, you know, would give reasons for each possibility. We don't have time to go into all of that. But suffice it to say that some scholars have said that Paul's thorn in the flesh was probably uh, recurring malaria, or some said it was a problem with his eyesight, some said that it was some form of epilepsy. Some said that Paul's thorn in the flesh was sexual temptation. Some said that it was most likely a speech impediment. Or some have said that it was most likely the terrible persecution that Paul so often had to face. But the truth is, we don't really know what Paul's thorn was. But whatever it was, Paul recognized it as a messenger of Satan. It was an attack from our enemy, the devil. Picking it up in verse 8, Paul said, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Paul knows that even though it's an attack from Satan, that the Lord Jesus can make it stop. Jesus trumps Satan. Even though it's an attack from the enemy, Jesus is strong enough to make it stop. So Paul does what we do. He prays and he prays and he prays. We pick it up in verse 9. But he said, he's praying to Jesus, so Jesus replies, but Jesus said, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul, in the midst of whatever kind of suffering this was, he cries out to Jesus, the loving Lord Jesus. And Jesus doesn't take it away. Jesus doesn't stop Satan's attack. Instead, Jesus says, my grace. Grace. What does that mean? We use that word in so many different ways. We'll refer to, you know, a dancer has grace. We'll say grace at the table. And then we'll talk about God's grace. What does grace mean? In the Bible, God, or God uses that term, grace, to mean something that uh, when God gives us something good that we don't deserve and we can't earn. That's grace. The underlying Greek word means gift. It's a gift. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. It's grace. Kind of like salvation. We say salvation. We're only saved by the grace of God. It's a gift that we don't deserve and we can't earn. And that's true. But grace doesn't only refer to salvation. Grace refers to any good thing we receive from God. 